Once upon a time, in the year 2020, there came a new disease that made life kind of funny. Many things changed and then changed again, listing the things that people can't do and the things that they can. Instead of having an in-person BBS that's small, since we wouldn't be able to accommodate all, we decided to go with a complete and total revamp. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the very first completely virtual purpose camp. Chapter 1, Aloha Patmos Welcome to the kingdom of Patmos, a land with more family clans warring than most. Here three unique groups each have a special job to perform. There's the king in his court, the knights with their swords, and then the scholars who talk until everyone else is dreadfully bored. The first of our clans prefer to do calm, simple things. This group is made up of royals, the king. The court of Patmos wants to remain in a relaxed state of mind. They constantly peruse between whether a nap or a snooze is the best way to spend their time. Their list of demands wear on through the days, mile upon mile their comforts are displayed. Safety is their priority, so they give in when others make a fuss. Vacations are mandatory, and sleep is a must. Their biggest belief is to stand in the middle, not deciding any answer on any riddle. They choose in every rock-paper-scissor match to sit safely back and twiddle. They refuse to try hot sauce or anything spicy. They also refuse anything that feels icy. There's no freezers at all in their land as a whole, and no ice cream's ever been allowed in their bowls. They prefer that their food sit out for a while, neither hot nor cold, for everything is their style. And if anyone asks why, they simply reply, this is the Laodicean way. King Sardis and Queen Tyra might seem like they're working, but don't be mistaken, right now they're busy packing for a very long vacation. Tyra, would you please pass the melatonin? Yes, here you are, Sardis, and would you pass me my night cream? There you are. I think I'm almost finished with this suitcase. I can't wait. How relaxing it will be to sit back and sleep our vacation away. It has been so tiring ruling this kingdom. I mean, I only get the recommended 20 hours of sleep a day. Absolutely exhausting without the extra four my body needs. I'm sorry, dear. Soon you will get the extra sleep you desire. You are always so attentive to my health needs. So, do you think she will do a good job? Our little Delphia, running a whole country for a whole month? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the king and his queen will soon leave on holiday, leaving their only daughter in charge of the whole kingdom while they're away. As Princess Delphia enters the room, she hopes her parents can help her shake off her worries of doom. Hey, Mom, Dad. Proceed with your entry, Delphia. Yes, do come in, darling. Um, I had a few questions before you two head out for a month-long vacation. Oh, yes, go ahead. What is it, darling? Well, I mean, this is a huge responsibility, and I just want to make sure I have everything set in place. I still don't feel ready for this, but I will do the very best job I can. Remember what I always say, middle ground. Safe, safe and sound, sound middle sound. ground. I know, but... Don't work yourself too hard. Everything will be okay. After all, this is the Laodicean way. Oh, darling, you seem frazzled. How much sleep have you been getting? Um... Delphia? Eight hours? At this shocking revelation, the king and queen are taken aback. The king flops into his throne and brings his hand to his head with a smack. The queen staggers. She stumbles and flails, then checks Delphia's vital signs for further details. How are you standing? Oh, my darling Delphia! No, I feel fine, really. You are sounding like someone from 
uh, Smyrna. Oh, don't utter the thought! What is wrong with the clan of Smyrna? With more energy than she'd ever seen them expend, the king and queen violently shake their heads. They are always looking for trouble. They never back down from a fight. They work all the time. Then they eat their soup, burning hot. I mean scorching hot. Enough! I don't want to hear one more word about that clan. Princess Delphia, your biggest concern will be to keep the kingdom of Patmos happy. They want their food, sleep, and multiple controls. If you provide all of these things, the people will rejoice quietly in their cozy homes, and you will have very little conflict to deal with. What about the clans of Smyrna and Ephesus? The Hots and the Knots battle each other. Just stay out of their way. Your mother is right. Remember, middle ground, safe and sound. Chapter 2, Departure. So the king and his queen prepared for their voyage, leaving their daughter behind, feeling unprepared in her knowledge. Delphia was different, determined and kind, but she still had much to learn about royalty's daily grind. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Goodbye, sweetie. Goodbye, Delphia. As the king and the queen climb into their carriage to leave, Delphia is left behind with an entire kingdom to lead. Once her parents were well out of sight, Delphia returns to the throne room to settle her citizens' fights. You see, whenever the people of Patmos had a dispute, it was up to royalty to decide who to refute, who was right, and who had done wrong. The line of people waiting to be heard was growing rather long. Okay, this isn't too bad. You can do this, Delphia. How hard can it be? Um, next... The first to appear was a Laodicean and her neighbor, both hoping Princess Delphia would grant them her favor. Princess Delphina, I haven't slept in a week because my neighbor here has a rooster that crows every morning at the break of dawn. Can you imagine rising when the sun does? Your Majesty, please listen. I'm not trying to cause a problem here. I want to sleep too, but a chicken is going to do what a chicken is going to do. And royalty is going to do what royalty is going to do. Princess Delphia, what are you going to do? Um, middle ground. Keep everyone happy. How? Princess Delphia was at a loss. A townsman chimed in, pushing her to be the boss. Are they almost done? I'm ready for a nap. Um, I would suggest earplugs. Yes, everyone in the kingdom can wear earplugs as they sleep. Okay, I'll give it a try. By following her father's advice, Delphia had just solved problem number one. Next, a woman from Smyrna stepped up to share what she felt must be done. Princess Delphia, my how you have grown. As you may know, I'm from Smyrna. I have come here every day of the year. We work very hard to provide for this kingdom. All of the farmers and field hands constantly work to meet the needs of Ephesus, Laodicea, and Smyrna. I'm just concerned. So I'll bring my request once again. You see, Smyrna is the only one working the field, and many times the constant demands of Laodicea prevent us from having the food we need for basic life. The concern from the Smyrnan caused quite a buzz. Really? What are you getting at, lady? Quiet. Proceed. All I would ask is that maybe some of the Laodiceans could help with the field work, or even start growing in their fields to help with the growing demands. Preposterous! This is simply preposterous. Who do you think you are? Outrageous. There is no way I will do that at all. I have needs too. Absolutely not. How dare you try to make me feel badly about this? How can I make everyone happy? Uh, um... As Delphia tried to decide what to do, a person from Ephesus stepped into view. What is happening here? This man and farmer thinks we should all be farming. She thinks we are monopolizing the resources. 
she's threatening our lazy lives. Oh, of course. It's just like a hot to start a fight. We not prefer a more sophisticated route. I can see I'm outnumbered. Don't worry. I'll be back tomorrow and the next day too. And I'll keep sowing and planting and growing your food. And one day you'll see the truth through and through. Princess Delphia was puzzled. She was muzzled, in fact. She didn't know how to solve this attack. There were problems, big ones on display, big problems that wouldn't be solved in a day. While her father might say to walk the fence line, Delphia was finding it hard to bend with no spine. She actually agreed with the hot. She agreed with the hot whether anyone else did or not. And being caught in the crowd on her very first day, she realized this couldn't be solved in the usual way. So Delphia did something that had never been done. She did something that stunned everyone. People of Ephesus, Smyrna, and Laodicea. Great people of Patmos, I declare, a great change must happen here. We must decide for once and for all to make a decision. And the decision we make will be the provision we need. Some will leave unhappy, some will leave sad. I realize to a Laodicean, this sounds really bad. I will choose a council wisely from the officials I trust. I will choose that as a must. Now, for the time being, everyone should be leaving. I will send to the courts the royal hots and royal knots, and we will finalize what the terms will be. And tomorrow, we will announce the decision at three. Chapter three, hots and knots. While our dear princess adjusts to the new, there's still two more clans waiting to come into view. The first of our three preferred life to be easy. Right in the middle is where they choose to stay, while the other two clans want things exactly the opposite way. To solve this problem, Delphia would need help from both sides. One group uses muscles, the other uses their minds. Smyrna and Ephesus, two opposite lots. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the hots and the knots. Hereby I request to represent the hots, the presence of the Honorable Sir Justice, Knight of Smyrna, and Lady Victoria, Commodore of Smyrna. The hots are fiery, cunning, and quick. They take life by the horns and aren't afraid of its kicks. The heroes of Patmos, the Knights of Smyrna, are a noble clan. When they try something, they give it every single ounce that they can. These fighters love to eat curry and hot chili peppers. If you manage to best them, they'll be sure to do you one better. Hereby, I request to represent the knots, the presence of Honorable Lord Albert, Satrap of Ephesus and Countess Gertrude, scribe of Ephesus. The knots are cold, astounding, and smart. They understand most everything because they already took it apart. The skeptics of Patmos, the scholars of Ephesus are a brainy crew. When they discover something, they'll be sure to teach it to you. These scientists love to eat popsicles and stiff frozen pizzas. If you think you can outsmart them, they'll still manage to beat you. I have brought you all here today to discuss a decision that must be made. It was brought to my attention that Smyrna is the only clan that works the fields. The demands of food grow each day, and Smyrna works hard to make sure that other clans' demands are met at the expense of their own people, lacking the food they need. First and foremost, please verify if this story is true and then offer your advice and solution too. The hot spoke up first to support the woman's claim. Princess Delphine, this is indeed true. Our people are modest in their needs and consider it a privilege to feed the kingdom of Patchmos. But lately those needs have been grown exponentially and the amount that they want we just can't sustain. Princess Delphia, I admire your bravery. The land of the clans is all the same. All the land is fertile and great for planting. I would suggest that members from each clan would come to Smyrna and lend a hand until they are knowledgeable enough to farm their own land. Next, the knots answered in their usual disdain. Oh, but knowledge, my lady, we already possess. Knowledge and know-how isn't the issue. It looks to us that Smyrna is making up complaints. We all know they like a fight. 
they're, they are looking for something to change our way of life. If we were to boil it all down, they're probably not doing it right. Ephesians are the teachers, professors, and such. Send over some Smyrnans to learn of our ways. How will we know this is true unless we send over Ephesians? Send some of our educated detectives to look into this matter, to determine if it at all is worthy of a bother. After all, dear princess, we don't want to keep you busy with this when you'd rather be napping than rolling patness. Unfortunately, the Hots did not feel the same. You dare question our integrity? You dare question our viability? If it wasn't for us, you'd all be starving. See, the anger just rises and rises. Leave it to a hot. Leave it to a knot. Just then, a guard broke into the fray, sharing news with Sir Justice that left him looking dismayed. Are you sure about this? This is verified? The guard shook his head yes and breathlessly slumped to the floor. Nervously, Justice went and quietly closed the door. What's going on? Princess, Babylon is awake. Babylon? The dragon? Awake. Yes. What happens next? Will Delphia faint from sorrow? Looks like you'll have to come back tomorrow. Hi, I'm Sabah, and I hope you enjoy the Kingdom of Patmos and all of the Bible stories we have for you this week. There was a real place called Babylon. The Israelites continued to sin and their sin led them to that bad place. The Israelites had been taken captive from their homes and brought to the land of Babylon. It was a very sad time for the Israelites. Babylon was very different. The people who lived in Babylon were called Babylonians. The Babylonians worshiped false idols and statues. Babylonians practiced sin and wickedness. And now the Israelites were forced to live, work, and survive in Babylon. But God had a plan to rescue his chosen people from Babylon and return them to their true home. Isaiah 43, five through seven says, do not fear for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east. I will gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from far away, my daughters from the end of the earth. Bring everyone who is called by my name. For I have made him for my honor. Yes, I made him. Until that day came, they faced challenges, and a few godly men and women rose up, and despite all odds, despite their circumstances, they trusted God and stood unshakable. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 says, But now the Lord who made you, O Jacob, he who made you, O Israel, says, Do not be afraid, for I have bought you and made you free. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not flow over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The fire will not destroy you. In a lot of ways, we live in Babylon, a sinful, broken world with many challenges. How can you stand unshakable when the ground is shaking and the storm is raging? <laughs> I want you to take a look at these two beautiful homes. You have a choice. You can choose to stay on the beach house built near the sandy sea, or you can choose the mountain house built on the rock solid hillside. In life, we have choices. Those choices affect our lives. Just like the Israelites had a choice to obey God, or disobey God. We have the same choice. Look at the sandy side. When the waves begin to rise and the rains begin to pour, which house will last? Which house will stand? 
The beach house doesn't last very long against the storm waters because it isn't built on something solid. The house built upon the solid rock lasts and stands against any storm that rolls in. How do we stand on solid rock? It is impossible for us to stand on anything but the rock of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's son. God sent Jesus to the world because God loves us and wants us to have the best life ever and forever in heaven. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he died even though he had never, not once, ever sinned. And three days later, Jesus rose from death to life. Jesus went to heaven to be with his father God and promised to come back one day and take us with him to go to our true home in heaven. When we choose to build our lives on the word of God and a relationship with Jesus, we can truly stand strong and unshakable. I want to give you an opportunity tonight to make that choice. This choice is up to you. Will you put aside sin and bad choices and choose to follow Jesus? If so, please repeat after me and believe in your heart the words that I'm asking you to say. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart, my mind, my life. I believe that you died on the cross for me and I believe that you rose again. I believe, Jesus, that you are going to come back again. I don't want to sin. Lord, forgive me for the times that I have sinned. And Jesus, help me to follow and obey God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer with me tonight, you have made the best choice ever. Let a parent know that you've decided to follow Jesus. And in your purpose satchel is more info on how to walk this new life of faith. Hi everyone, my name is Narrator and I have a very special story that I'm excited to share with you. So make sure you keep checking back every day for the next chapter.